I propose to uh, introduce you or to maybe you're already introduced or to provide you a little bit of information about making music with a computer. In the January newsletter, which you all should have received as card-carrying members of the Bristol Village Computer Club, there is an article about computer music and there in that article are links to several of the pieces of programming or software that you can use to do computer music with and they vary from probably the lowest one at uh, about fifty dollars and uh, on up to several hundred dollars for the industrial strength uh, programs. There are an, a number, there are a couple of programs that that article that I referred to in the January newsletter uh, where it reviews the various music, uh, computer music programs. The top two that are rated are Sibelius and another program called Finale. And those two programs have been used by the professional level type musicians for some time now. As a matter of fact, um, our resident professional music editor, Gordon Matthey, uh, receives uh, music scores uh, on Finale and he gets to edit them from that. Uh, some years ago, I experimented with a, a couple of the different programs that were out there, uh, and I stumbled onto a pro the program Sibelius, I think it was about version 1.2 at that point, and I've been using it since because I felt comfortable with its interface, and today, or this evening, I'll be doing a little demonstration on Sibelius version 7. This is a, a demonstration, not a tutorial, so you don't have to worry about taking notes. There will not be a quiz at the end of the program. Let me jump over to the Sibelius program. And basically, this program allows you to do a number of things. You can enter music into this program in various ways and have it play the music either through your computer soundboard or through something called a, mus a MIDI, a Music Industry Digital Interface, through external sound modules. And there are some sound modules that some people think the, the sounds of the violins or the grand pianos are better than the internal sounds in a computer. So you can enter music with this program and you can play it. You can also compose music in this program. And you can also print scores in, in a very high quality, high resolution format. Let's start by just entering some music from scratch. And I'm in the new score part of the quick start menu in Sibelius. By the way, there is a tab here for learning and there are a bunch of tutorials for Sibelius. Uh, there's a reference guide, quick tour, lots of information available if you're new to the program. Uh, but in the uh, new score area, they provide us with a multitude of templates to start with, or we can start with just a plain, uh, simple bass or treble staff or blank screen and go from there. Uh, I know you can't read the fine print, so I'll, I'll give you an idea of some of the many, many templates here. There's different kinds of bands, brass band, concert band, school band, etc. There are templates for uh, brass choirs, wind quintets, and string uh, trios, it goes on and on. Choir, SATB, with the organ or with a piano or without, SSA, uh, TTB, there are all these preset menus that are available. There's also uh, marching band presets or templates. There are drum corps, all kinds of drum corps templates. There are also templates for classical orchestra, romantic orchestra, film orchestra, um, there's also, there are also templates for pop groups, uh, R&B bands, guitar, guitar with tablature, and so on. Let's go back here a ways, and let's create a new score using the template that just uses voice and keyboard. So I'll click on that, and as soon as I do, there are some decisions that Sibelius allows me to make. Just to start with, I can choose whether my, my score will be in portrait mode on letter size paper or landscape mode, and it gives me choices of other size paper if I'm using that. Uh, the next thing I should decide is the time signature, and pretty much all the standard time signatures are available. I'm going to choose the 4-4 time 
by default. Some scores you would like to start with a pickup bar or upbeat bar, um, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, next, there's a place to set the tempo, and you can set the tempo by using a variety of text, standard text words like allegretto, allegro, etc. Or you can set the tempo with a metronome mark. In this case, the default is a quarter note equals 100 beats to the measure. By the way, I forgot to give the disclaimer before I started this diatribe. Uh, I have to confess that I have absolutely no formal music training. I know a bit about computers, but uh, I never took music lessons, never took piano lessons, never took anything. However, my sister, who was older than I, did take piano lessons, and she had in the piano bench one of these unfolding pieces of cardboard that you can set behind the piano keys. And I, when I was a kid, I more or less taught myself what notes go with what place on the staff uh, by using my sister's key chart and her John Thompson first grade book or whatever. Uh, you all know about that. Anyway, that's my, f my informal training as a musician. So I'm going to say probably for those of you that are trained in music, and I know there are quite a few that are, I may say some dumb things, but just try to ignore that and, and don't laugh at me too much. Okay, back to setting up this new score that we're working on. We set the, the metronome mark to 100 beats per quarter note. Uh, there are also keys that we can choose from here. I'm not going to bother doing that. I'm just going to leave the default uh, key signature. And I'm not going to fill in the title or the composer or all that. I'm just going to go ahead and create a new score. And here's my score. You have to imagine that uh, what you see here, let me zoom out a little bit, what you see here represents sheet of paper, music paper. And uh, we can zoom in and out on it, similar to what we do with word processors. And uh, the parchment color is just the background of, of whatever tabletop you have your score laying in. Now we have to figure out how to enter notes. And Sibelius gives us a number of different ways to enter notes. One important thing I should point out to you is this little keypad thing. Let me show you on uh, a screen capture I have of the uh, keypad so you can see a little what it looks like. This keypad, the organization here mimics the keypad on a standard computer keyboard, except that instead of the numeric keypad numbers or the other keys that you have on your keypad, they're substituting these things for the keys. For example, a quarter note is the same as pressing the number four on the keypad on my, my computer. So if I want to choose a quarter note, I'll just choose that or I'll press on the keypad. So I could either mouse the selection or I could use the keypad for a quick selection. And there are other things. If I want to have a note selected and I want to change it to a sharp or a natural or a flat, I can just click the, uh, the corresponding key on the keypad, or I can move the mouse over to the on-screen keypad and select things with a mouse. So let me go back to the score. And to make this a little easier to start with, I'm going to change the view. Right now we're looking at the sheet of paper that would be the musical score that you would normally have. But in the view command, Oh, stop the presses. What's all this junk up here? Sibelius uses the new Microsoft style ribbon menus. And if you're using Windows 8 and you got into the, the file um, explorer, you'll see similar uh, ribbon, pan, ribbon menus. Let me show you a close up of, well, let's get in here and let's open an enlarged one. Uh, home, let's open this one. And because I, I'm doing it in, in Paint Shop where I can zoom and pan on, on this thing, so maybe you can see the idea of the, the ribbon tools. Instead of having lots of traditional drop down menus where you click on something and then you go down and then you have an arrow and you click over there and you go down and you have another arrow and there's multiple menu depths and you get, it's kind of unhandy. They've gone to having a whole bunch of quick click tools on this, this ribbon menu and it goes on over here off the screen. On the top of this ribbon, there are tabs, and I can switch from the home menu to the note input menu, to the text menu, to the play menu, etc. And each one of these tabs will reveal another ribbon full of tools that I can use um, 
when I'm, I'm uh, composing or editing music. So let's go back to uh, our score again. To make it a little easier to display when I'm entering the music, there's this viewing mode called panorama. And basically that just uh, pushes all the music out into one long horizontal line rather than to have it in the final printed page format. Okay, I'm going to uh, enter a little song familiar to most and see if I get, don't get lost here. Um, one of the ways I can enter music is I can choose a note value, quarter note. I can move the mousey over here to the place where I want that note and I can click it. And now I've just entered a middle C uh, quarter note. There are alternative ways to enter the notes. I could also press the letter C on the keyboard and enter a C. Or I could press the letter G uh, and enter a G, but that's not the G I wanted. So I'm going to move that up to there by using the little cursor control arrows on the keyboard. I, once I have a note there that's selected, I can move it around. Uh, there's another trick that I can use. I'm going to back up, and, and that third note is now selected. This, a lot of times in music, things are repeated. So if I want to repeat that G for the next note, I'll press the R key. So now I've entered four notes. Bum, 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 bum. There's yet another way I can enter notes. Uh, the one way, there's a couple more ways. One way that I don't have to demonstrate, if I had a MIDI keyboard, a full-size piano-style keyboard that has an MIDI connector, I could connect that through a, a little converter, cord converter, and plug it into the computer, and I could actually enter things from the keyboard. And if I had any keyboarding skills whatsoever, I could flip Sibelius into record mode, I could play away, stop the recording, and print out what I just played. However, I don't have those kind of keyboard skills. In the view menu though, they give us a little on-screen keyboard here that we can use. So that's, that's a nice alternative. So about here, I think I need an A. Of course, that's not exactly the right timing for Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, is it? So let me do some editing. Let's go here where it goes Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, oh, not Star R, but this should be a half note. So I'm going to select that note, and over here in my keypad, uh, I'm going to select the half note. So I changed that from a quarter note to a half note. Similarly, um, how I wonder what you are should be a half note. And also, no, oh, that was wrong. Good thing there is a um, undo option here. I thought there was an undo option. Where am I? Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. It's this one that should be a half note. What are, I got lost here someplace. Let's go back to the beginning. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. I got off track here right away, didn't I? Well, I told you I had no musical skills whatsoever. I'm lost again. <laughs> D. Back to C. Okay. Let me just play this and see where I need to do some editing. Right there is where I need to do some editing. So let's fix it. 
Um, up above is all this stuff is supposed to be over there a little bit, isn't it? So let's just select all that stuff and see if I can move it over to there. How's that? Well, let me just play that much. Uh huh. And this one was supposed to be a half note, and this shouldn't be there. So you get the idea that you can edit stuff. By the way, um, if I continue with this, this line repeats. These two measures repeat, don't they? So I shouldn't have to type that in again. And um, I didn't select the right thing, did I? Okay, this much. Uh, I was not holding the shift key down. Okay. And then, from way back at the beginning, this part repeats. I drag it over here, and I drop it there. I wonder how crazy I've made it so far. Okay, so much for the voice part. Um, let's let's copy that whole business over to the uh, piano part. I'm going to select this, just like in word processing. I'm going to hold the shift key down and select there so I get all of that. But unlike word processing, I'm not going to do the control V. I'm just going to, whoops, I'm just going to hold the alt key down and click where I want that to go. So. Now that's in the piano part. So I've got two copies, one for the, the voice and one for the piano. Um, ought to put a, something in, in this bass clef here. Uh, I think that according to my notes, I'm supposed to put a uh, whole note right there. Now, actually, I need a third. I need two whole notes. Once I've had that in there, all I have to do is press letter key letter three, number three on the keyboard, and I can make thirds. I can make another third, I can make a fourth, um, just by, by adding to that. Of course, we didn't want those two. Oops, I uh, did want that one. Okay, now let's back up here and let's just copy that, or repeat it over to the next measure, but it belongs up here, only it should be a half note. And I could repeat that. And there's all kinds of strategies you can use to enter the notes into your score. Everything from, from the basic, uh, just mouse them in one at a time, to use keyboard presses or to use the key, the on-screen keyboard to select things. Ask me a question, because I've been talking for quite a while. You. Uh you said this is version 7. Yes. Uh, and how much does it cost to? Um, I don't remember, but there's an introductory version of this, which will do everything that I'm showing tonight, and it's a little over $100. Uh, the the full-blown professional version uh, is uh, several hundred dollars and has a lot more bells and whistles than, than the basic version. Uh, similar thing with Finale. They have an introductory level version and a professional version. Uh, the professional version of this program, by the way, is used by some fairly serious composers who compose for film, television, and at one time there was a rumor that Andrew Lloyd Webber was using Sibelius. I don't know if that's true or, or still true or not, but, but uh, the professional version of this program is pretty serious. Ask me the follow-up question. <laughs> Does that little keyboard come with the program that you order? This on-screen keyboard is part of the program, yes. Uh, if you want an off-screen keyboard, if you want a real keyboard, uh, you can buy one, any keyboard from the keyboard store that has a MIDI connection. But this, what you see, is comes with a program. 
but you notice it's pretty hard to play chords with this. This is just simple plink, plink, plink. Uh, but without too much work, you can add chords. And uh, because there's so much repetition uh, in, in music, it's pretty easy to, to build uh, more of a score. What about words, you might ask? Well, up here in the voice line, let me do a shortcut keyboard to start entering lyrics. And I'll enter T-W-I-N, oops, not with a caps lock key on, T-W-I-N dash K-L-E comma space, space jumps it to the next note and a dash jumps it to the next note. So if you have a word split between notes, can't type and talk at the same time, um, you use the dash key, not the equal key. So much for my Louis keyboard. Etc. So you can add lyrics, and it's possible to add multiple verses uh, to any particular line in the score. Let me get out of the panorama mode here and go back here and, and zoom out a little bit. And you can see we pretty much have the whole score there, but we have all this extra music, extra staffs and stuff that we don't really need, so let's delete those. Everything from there to there on my home page delete button says, do you really want to do that? I said, yeah, but that's not arranged so very well either. So let me select all of that and go to an option here that says make layout uniform. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have four bars per system and I'm going to have three systems per page and also three systems on the first page. Okay, and uh, oh, I still have one too many, don't I? So let's uh, delete that one. Okay, now I have my score nicely fitting on a page, fit to print. Well, if I would finish the job, it would be fit to print. So, next question. Could you scan this in from an existing score? Actually, could I scan this in from an existing score? And the answer is yet. Yes. Uh, at least with version 7. It, version 7 comes with another piece of software that will scan, that will work with your scanner and scan a page of music in. And I tried that a little bit, and just like in character optical character recognition, <laughs> if you've ever tried to do that with scanning, when you get into music, you end up doing more editing than it's worth, I found, because when it comes to there is between a natural and a sharp and a flat and some of those notation things, um, depending on the bigness and boldness of the thing you're scanning, chances are you'll have to go in and edit a lot of that stuff. So I find it easier just to take a piece of sheet music and just enter and do my copy and paste and beat, beat it to death and get it in that way. And say you had some acapella talent. Could you sing it and then the notes would appear? You can, yes, you can enter music, as I said, with a MIDI keyboard, but with other MIDI instruments. So if you played the saxophone, you could play the saxophone and record it as a score in this uh, program. But the, the instrument you're using has to be able to connect through the MIDI connection into the, the software. As I recall, there may be a humming option also. You can hum into a microphone and do it <laughs> if you have perfect pitch, perhaps. Um, there's a question over here someplace. I'm in trouble now. The profession, yeah. professor has a no, question. No, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, I own Sibelius. I own Finale. Most major music companies will only accept Finale. Use, uh, Sibelius is much more user-friendly. 
but I'm too old to switch. As far <laughs> as lyrics, in Finale, you don't have to match the notes. Simply type the lyrics, and it will match the lyrics to the notes, which saves a lot of time. Yeah, that does save a lot of time. Uh, although, I find that if I know the lyrics and I start on one note, I can enter it pretty fast, even though I'm not a, tight, a tough touch typist. It, it doesn't take a lot of time to enter lyrics one, once you're, you have the feel for every time you change notes, you do a dash, and every time you change, um, or I'm sorry, every time you change, yeah, you change notes with the same word, you put in a dash, and every time you want to change notes with a new word, you put in a space, and it just goes pretty well. Another question. Well, what about dynamics, you might ask, because some music is louder and softer in places. And we could do that. We can go in here and uh, we can, I'm gonna, I, I did a quick key press. I could do this through the menu, but it's quicker this way. I have all of these markings that I could add. For example, if I wanna start out M, MF, I could put an MF there. And then if over here, maybe I want that to be um, louder, so I'll make that F. And I can do that kind of dynamic. What I'm going to do is, I've done a little bit of this ahead of time. Let's see if I can find one of the files that uh, I was doing for practice. And let's see if it gives me any grief here. Let's zoom in on this a little bit as a demonstration. Notice that I've gone in here and I've, I've put a, a couple of dynamic symbols here. One of the things you can do quite easily is you can put in crescendo or decrescendo. And if you want to, let's say decrescendo, uh, I'll select the range I want and I'll get into one of the menus and I'll just choose the symbol for crescendo, decrescendo. And there's a large variety of tools available to enter uh, into the music. And the playback uh, option recognizes those. Uh, one of the tools is a retard. I don't know if that's big enough for you to see it from back there. But here I selected a range and uh, chose the retard tool. Let's uh, go back here uh, with a score. And let's play this version and see, see what it sounds like with those silly dynamics. Make sure I start at the beginning. A little bit quieter. Should be getting louder pretty soon. Now, one of the, the problems with computer music early on was that it sounded too like, much like a computer, very, very regular. Well, in this program, we, in the uh, playback menu, we have some performance options. Right now, it's set to be expressivo, but mech, I'm not Italian, meccanio or meccanio or whatever, well, let's not do it that way, let's do it rubato. So you can change the, the expression and, and the, the feel for the music. There are others, there are rhythmic things here also that'll mess with the notes a little bit. You can have light swing and regular swing and shuffle and, and all kinds of, of things that'll, that'll make the music sound more, uh, less machine-like and more natural. And uh, you can also choose some amount of reverberation. You can have a concert hall or a cathedral or a small room uh, for your playback. So there are lots of things you can do in the performance side of your music. Uh, when I was looking around on the internet, uh, I wanted to find another sample of something that might be familiar. Well, let's see, do I have it in here already? Um, Uh, that's not the version I want. 
Where's my... Well, I'll go at it this way because I can find it. I, I found uh, Vivaldi's uh, Four Seasons uh, in a simplified version for kids. And it's very simplified and it was put in in the key of C and everything. And if I play that back, Enough to give you the idea. Let's see what the playback style is set for on this. The performance, uh, that's mechanical again. Let's change that a little bit. Of course, the violins wouldn't, wouldn't just go neep, neep, neep. They, you might have a little staccato here and, and whatever. So what you can do is you can select these notes and one of the options here is to make those notes staccato. Let's do a couple of those so you can, and then I'll play it so you can see what the difference is. Uh, better do it in the second violins also. I'm, I'm poking on the keyboard tool down here for the little dot that says make it staccato. And similarly, if I want to make, make it uh, the full note, I can, I can choose the opposite of staccato. Now if I play that, you'll notice a subtle difference here maybe. Staccato versus long. Now this is no staccato here. Okay, well to save time, oh, one, one more thing. Uh, before I go to the revised version of this, I'm going to select the whole thing because one of the options that you have once you enter music in here, this was in the key of C, uh, you can transpose this music. You can transpose it by intervals, or uh, let's transpose it to the key of E um, and see what happens if I do that. And that'll sound a little different. And that's actually, I think, the original key. So let me go and, and see if I can find the uh, edited version of the same piece, maybe. That's probably it. So ask me a question, so far. I know there are some musical people there that would like to know, can it do this kind of thing? Uh, and I may or may not know that. Dumbfounded completely. Well, you could sit around here and mouse around and you could enter the, the whole four seasons from Vivaldi if you wanted. Um, if you can find a MIDI file, MIDI file, on the internet, you can import that into uh, Sibelius and, and play it and or edit it to your heart's content. Or, if you like, you can actually uh, create your own stuff. Uh, here's something that a while back I was fooling around with, again, you have to realize that I'm not a professional composer. There's some fooling around in the side one day. When the Summer Flowers Are Blooming by Leonard Oliver Nassman. Yeah, I'll be so 
instrument are going to sound this. One of my uh, sort of hobbies is uh, I'll make sure that this is going to play the instruments I want is to take some music, typically uh, music that's uh, that comes in the form of sheet music. With typically I'll get a score that'll be piano and and voice, and as I put in the uh, the twinkle twinkle little star um, I'll, I'll put in one of those scores but then I'll add a few instruments and I'll add another few things to go along with it uh, because I enjoy doing it and here's a piece of uh, piano vo vocal score that I messed with in uh, Sibelius recently get this out of my way This was a lonely way to spend an evening and think of anything that I'd rather do. This was a lonely way to spend an evening and think of lovely as you a program right here in Glen Center a wonderful audience too making a real nice evening singing songs just for you this was a lovely Spend an 